Buddha, circa 450 BCE, is the individual whose teachings form the basis of the Buddhist tradition. 1. Buddha as philosopher. While the Buddha does deny that any of the psychophysical elements is a self, these interpreters claim that he at least leaves open the possibility that there is a self that is transcendent in the sense of being non-empirical. What both interpretations share is the assumption that it is possible to arrive at what the Buddha himself thought without relying on the understanding of his teachings developed in the subsequent Buddhist philosophical tradition. Some scholars, Dollar Hash for example Dollar Hash, Gombrich 2009, Shulman 2014, are more sanguine than others about the possibility of overcoming this difficulty, and thereby getting at what the Buddha himself had thought, as opposed to what later Buddhist philosophers thought he had thought. 2. Core Teachings. But it seems safe to say that the Buddha taught an analysis of the origins of suffering roughly along the following lines. Given the existence of a fully functioning assemblage of psychophysical elements, the parts that make up a sentient being, ignorance concerning the three characteristics of sentient existence, suffering, impermanence and non-self, will lead, in the course of normal interactions with the environment, to appropriation, the identification of certain elements as I, and mine. Since our belief that there are chariots is thus due to our having a certain useful concept, the chariot is said to be a mere conceptual fiction. 3. Non-self. Best known among these is the argument from impermanence, S3.66-8, which has this basic structure. That he listed five kinds of psychophysical element, and not just one, shows that the Buddha embraced a kind of dualism. Consequently, given the assumption that the person is wholly composed of the psychophysical elements, it appears to follow that a self of this description does not exist. Perhaps its most dramatic form is aimed at the Buddha's acceptance of the doctrines of karma and rebirth. 4. Karma and Rebirth While recognition of the moral value of others may still involve the conceit that there is an I, it can nonetheless constitute progress toward dissolution of the sense of self. Rebirth without transmigration is logically possible. 5. Attitude toward reason. Since each of 3 and 4 appears to be formally contradictory, to entertain either is to entertain the possibility that a contradiction might be true. Pressed to give his answers to the questions about the arhat and the like, the Buddha first rejects all the possibilities of the tetralemma, and defends his refusal on the grounds that such theories are not conducive to liberation from samsara. Indeed, one does find a spirited discussion within the tradition concerning the question whether the Buddha is omniscient, a discussion that may well reflect competition between Buddhism and those Brahmanical schools that posit an omniscient creator. Since the latter did not take the Buddha's word as authoritative, Buddhist thinkers were required to defend their positions in other ways.